This is Mario Rondon again, the motivational speaker and orator. I'm coming to you today. I want to speak to you about my best friend, which is pain. But before that, I want to pay homage and honor to my friend Gio, who lives in Texas. Gio was a Marine. He joined the Marine Corps at 16 years of age, believe it or not. And he turned 17 in the front lines in Vietnam. Gio today is a volunteer soldier and he goes to VA hospitals to help veterans that are dying, veterans that have drug addictions, alcohol addictions, all of these things. Meanwhile, Gio's got a plate full of a lot of situations. Gio has been through an enormous amount of pain. He lost a daughter years ago due to an accident. His marriage is not quite doing right. But I want to tell you that Gio is a winner to me. Gio is what pain brings out and he doesn't realize it now but he's going through so much pain that in the future he's going to be able to help even more people than he's helping. And I just want to send this out Gio, I love you for coming through and helping me when I needed help, for always being a friend, for always talking to me and being kind. So that's enough of Gio but I just want to tell you, he told me one night there was tracer bullets running all around in, in the dark and the VC had come into the camp so he hid inside a hole and covered himself with leaves the partner that was right next to him, the VC came and shot him in the head, boom point blank with an AK-47 he already had been shot he, he had injuries to his head injuries all over his body, contusions and everything else and abrasions and the next morning the helicopter came and took him out of there took him to the hospital, they cleaned him up he, I don't know how many days he was there, a couple of days, and then he came back, back to the front lines. Gio's in the front line today, helping veterans. And I just want to say that I wasn't a veteran myself when my father fought in Korea and was blinded for six months. So I know what Gio's been through. He's been through hell and back. So now I want to talk to you about my best friend, which is pain, and why I think pain is a good friend to me, and has been. Pain is my friend. The more I've overcome, the more stronger I've gotten. And the more I'm cl getting closer to my dreams and to succeed. Why? Because I believe that God, in all of His glory and in and all of His wisdom, has allowed it so for me to have more inner strength and help out my sons, help out fellow friends and daughters and the masses. That's why God has allowed me to go through so much pain. Has it been easy? It hasn't been easy. For 30 years I've suffered with the same ailment. But am I the only one going through this? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. With certainty, you can be sure that there's people out there going through hell who are doing more than people that have no problems in their lives, come home, run after a beer, watch TV, and that's all they do and argue with their wives. I've come to the realization, like I said, that my challenges will help my sons, grandsons, and the circle of friends which I have, which is very small, is Gio, Charles, and Mike Bisono. Those are the only friends that I have, and Chino here, and Camilo, and Doña Madeline. Those are the only real friends in my small circle that I call friends because Friends is a big, big word. A friend means you can knock on a person's door at 3 in the morning, crying, and they'll hug you and tell you what's the problem. They won't leave the door shut. They'll open that door. So like I said, I'm going to help my grandsons. i got two more grandsons on the way. I'm not gonna, the, the, my middle son is having uh, another boy, and my youngest boy, his wife's having another little boy. So I'm going to be the grandfather of five. So why do I do this? Why do I do these speeches? Mario, why do you do it if you, get, if you have retirement and you have uh, Social Security? Why do you do it? Because my dream is to help people. I can't help people by receiving my check, going and having a few drinks with my wife, having a big steak, and then come and lay down and let my belly get real fat. That's not what my purpose is in life. My purpose in life is to help others. Let me see a little bit. I don't want to read everything to you. There are many speakers which have come through a plethora of pain, and I'm not hyperbolizing this. They've come through hell 
and they succeeded. Les Brown went through hell, was born in an abandoned building. Eric Thomas lived in the streets for three years, PhD today. Those are the two greatest speakers I've ever heard speak in my life with so much passion and so much energy. So what must we do? We must listen to professionals in your field. Success is very subtle. It comes one progression at a time and at times incrementally. You will not even know that you're succeeding. It's just incremental. A little bit at a time, a little bit at a time. Like a river. The river's flowing back and forth. And they're giant rocks. But I can almost guarantee you and I can ascertain to you that the consistency which that river's coming back and forth will wear down those rocks. And that's the same way with your life. The consistency that you use in reading and studying and networking and doing a speech and it didn't quite come out right. Like, But what does uh, Les Brown say? It's better to do something and not do it good than not doing anything at all. We must remember that there's different types of success. To so some people, success is money. Some people's success is having a huge boat and 20 houses. And you can only live in one house at a time. But some people have those dreams. And I don't think there's anything wrong with it. I don't have those dreams. I don't aspire to that. I aspire to become a great speaker, to touch lives, to help people, to help the youth, to help my sons, to help my grandkids, to help my wife, to help everyone out there. To help Doña Madeline, who has been great to me. To help my little aunt who's getting older in New York. Pardon me for scratching my hair. Ultimately, we must remain in lion mode. That's what uh, Eric Thomas says. You're either in lion mode or in gazelle mode. A lion in the morning wakes up immediately fixed on where are the gazelles. Where are the gazelles? The gazelle wakes up and says, oh, oh, another day to run away from the lion. Oh, he's going to eat me and they're going to... He's going to bring the rest to his little pups. That's how we must chase after our dreams like a lion. Arr! Because if we chase after our dreams passively and with, oh, I'm going to try. I might make it, I might not. You'll never get nowhere. You have to attack things in life that you want. I wanted to get into aviation high school. I attacked it. I wanted to work for American Airlines. I attacked it. I want to be a famous motivational speaker, I'm attacking it. Perhaps not as fast as other people are, but I'm moving. You can be sure that Mario Rondon is going forward and moving. Just listen to my tapes and subscribe. And I also have one in uh, What's Up, when I was interviewed by Marilyn Janos in Telemundo 51. You'll enjoy that one, it's a lot of fun. This to me is the important thing of all. For me, to reach my goals is wonderful. But my aim will extend, my arm will extend to others behind me. See, my, I'm always thinking of my fellow man. And I believe what Jesus said, love thy neighbor as thyself. Is that easy to do? Absolutely not. I leave church on Sunday with my wife and there's cars cutting in front of me. And these are people that just came out of church and just heard, love thy neighbor as thyself. But in reality, the first thing we must do is ask God for guidance and give Him thanks for all the things that He gives us. For peace, for food, for love, for joy, for heartache, even if that's what it's taking to get you where you're going to go. Because ultimately and inevitably, you will succeed. You will get to your goal. But what kind of person will you be? A broken down person? Or will you be a person that is an example to others? So instead of watching TV and movie stars and all these people drive around in their, Rolex, in their Rolls Royces or Excaliburs or in their uh, Ferraris, top of the line Porsche, and all kind of diamonds and everything around, what does that do? Does that help people? Absolutely not. What helps people is your example. How you live your life when no one's looking. Integrity. Integridad. Cuando nadie está mirando, es que tú te estás supuesto a portar bien. When no one's looking, that's when you're supposed to behave yourself. I'm almost done here. 
Okay, and it takes 10,000 hours for you to reach. I've mentioned this before, but I think it should be inculcated in your brain so you remember. Because we're stubborn. We, you know, I might say something to you 50 times, and 50 times you forget. 10,000 hours to become a professional in your field, whatever your field is. And I shared this with my psychologist the other day, and I, I told her it specifically it takes 10,000 hours. And uh, she's extremely intelligent, extremely bright, and I only ask the Lord to bless her and her family. And like I said, all your dreams will come true. How long? Maybe a year? Maybe five years? That's, that's not relevant. What is relevant is the fact that we will continue to grow and prosper to greatness. Television, sports, etc. And all ways of making us spectators and people that purchase things, consumers, instead of being people that give things. That's what we must do, give. But now you see a few things why pain is my friend. I've had horrible pain. Burying my mother and seeing that casket go down 16 feet. Burying my dad and seeing that casket go down was one of the realizations in my life that we were going to die some one day. We all think about that, but we all don't want to believe it. But when I saw my pops and my mom being laid to rest, in the ground. I knew then. Your time is short too, Mario. How long do you think you're going to live? To your 80, to your 90, to your 150? No, absolutely not. We're not going to live that, that long. But I asked the Lord to look down from His throne and give me enough time to become a speaker and help people. To become a speaker and my grandkids to come up to me and say, Hey, Grandpa, we love you. Hello, Papa. Te queremos, abuelito. And I say in English and Spanish so that the people out there that know Spanish will also hear it. Well, with that, I'm going to leave you for this little speech that I gave. A little impromptu. I really, really didn't have it totally memorized. I, it just came from my heart. But I want you to remember Gio, okay? Because he's a wonderful, wonderful man. And another, another young man that was uh, in Vietnam, he was in the Navy, but he f used to fix helicopters and sometimes put dead, dead bodies on helicopters. His name is Sanzo, and I love him too. So Lord, in the name of your son Jesus, I thank you. I thank you for giving me another chance to speak, another chance to be heard by my fellow man, and I hope that my words inspire you to become a better person, a better father, a better son, a better husband, a better friend, a better everything. So with that I leave you. And Zig Ziglar, who was my pen pal for many years, who passed away, he used to say, I'll see you, and yes, I do mean you, at the top.